negativity the evil king goes hungry it is impossible to build one's own happiness on the unhappiness of others in the summer after my third year of college i have returned from spending a month at the ashram and am now interning for a finance firm i am at lunch with a couple of my colleagues we have grabbed sandwiches and brought them to the concrete courtyard in front of the building where low walls crisscross the hard scraping and young people in suits eat speedy lunches the frosting in the summer sun before returning to the hyper air conditioned building i am among out of water did you hear about gabe one of my friends says in a loud whisper the partners tore apart his presentation that dude another friend says shaking his head he is sinking fast i flash back to a class goranga das taught called cancer of the mind comparing complaining criticizing in the class we talked about negative thought habits including gossip one of the exercises if we did was keeping a tally of every criticism we spoke or thought for each one we had to write down 10 good things about the person it was hard we were living together in close quarters issues came up most of them pretty the average time for a monk's shower was 4 minutes when there was a line at the showers we would take bets on who was talking about too long this was the only betting we did because monks and though the snorers were relegated to their own room sometimes new partitioners emerged and we rated their snores on a sale of motorcycle these monks a vespa that once a harley davidson i went through the exercise dutifully noticing every criticism i let slip next to each i jotted down 10 positive qualities the point of the exercise was not hard to figure out every person was more good than bad but seeing it on the page made the ratio sink in this helped me see my own weakness differently i tended to focus on my mistakes without balancing them against my strengths when i found myself self critical i reminded myself that i to had positive qualities putting my negative qualities in context helped me recognize the same ratio in myself that i am more good than bad we talked about this feedback loop in class when we criticize others we can't help but notice the bad in ourselves but when we look for the good in others we start to see the best in ourselves too the guy sitting next to me on the wall nudges me out of my reverie so you think he will last i have lost track of what we are talking about who i ask gabe he should not have been hired in the first place right oh i don't know i say once i had spent time in the ashram i became very sensitive to gossip i had gotten used to conversations with primarily positive energy when i first arrived back in the world i was awkwardly silent i did not want to be the morality police but 
I also did not want to participate. As the Buddha advised, do not give your attention to what others do or fail to do. Give it to what you do or fail to do. I quickly figured out to say things like, Oh, I am not sure. Or, I have not heard anything. Then, I had shifted the conversation to something more positive. Did you hear? They have asked Max to stay on. I am psyched for him. Gossip has value in some situations. It helps society regulate what is acceptable behavior. And we often use it to see if others agree with our judgments about the people's behavior and therefore our values. But there are kinder ways to negotiate these questions. More often, we use gossip to put others down, which can make us feel superior to them and or bluster our status in a group. Some of my friends and colleagues stopped trying to gossip with me. Altogether, we had real conversation instead. Some trusted me more realizing that since I did not gossip with them, I would not gossip about them if there were people who thought I was just plain boring. Well, I have nothing bad to say about them. Negativity is everywhere. You wake up, your hair looks terrible. Your partner complains that you are out of coffee. On the way of work, some driver whose texting makes you miss the light. The news on the radio is worse than yesterday. Your cow worker whispers to you that Candace is pretending to be sick again. Every day, we are assaulted by negativity. No wonder we can't help but dish it out as well as receive it. We report the edges and pains of the day rather than the small joys. We compare ourselves to our neighbors, complain about our partners, say things about our friends behind their back and we would never say to their faces. Criticize people on social media. Argue, deceive, even explode into anger. This negative character even takes place throughout what we might consider to be a good day. And it's not part of anyone's plan. In my experience, nobody wakes up and thinks, how can I be mean to or about other people today or how can I make myself feel better by making others feel worse today. Still negativity often comes from within. We have three core emotional needs which I like to think of as peace, love and understanding. Thanks Nick Loy and Elvis Castillo. Negativity in conversation, emotions and actions often springs from a threat to one of the three needs. A fear that bad things are going to happen. Loss of peace. A fear of not being loved. Loss of love. Or a fear of being disrespected. Loss of understanding. From these fears stem all sorts of other emotions. Feeling overwhelmed, insecure, hurt, competitive, needy, and so on. These negative feelings spring out of us as complaints, comparisons, and criticisms. And other negative behaviors think of the trolls who dive onto social media, dumping ill will on their targets. Perhaps their fear is that they are not respected and they turn to trolling to feel significant. Or perhaps their political beliefs are 
generating the fear that their world is unsafe or maybe they are just trying to build a following fear certainly does not motivate every troll in the world for another example we all have friends who turn a catch up phone call into an interminable vent session describing their job their partner their family what's wrong what's unfair what's never going to change for these people nothing now ever seems to go right this person may be expressing their fear that bad things are going to happen their core need for peace and security is threatened bad things do happen in our lives we are all victims at some point whether we are being racially profiled or being cut off in traffic but if we adopt a victim mentality we are more likely to take on a sense of entitlement and to behave selfishly stanford psychologist took 104 subjects and assigned them to one of two groups one told to write a short essay about a time they were bored and the other to write about a time when life seemed unfair or when they felt wronged or cited by someone afterward the participants were asked if they wanted to help the researchers with an easy task those who had written about a time they had been wronged were 26% less likely to help the researchers in a similar study participants who identified with a victim mindset were not only more likely to express selfish attitudes afterward they were also more likely to leave behind trash and even take the experiment's pens negativity is contagious we are social creatures who get most of what we want in life peace love and understanding from the group we rather around us our brains adjust automatically to both harmony and disagreement we have already talked about how we unconsciously try to please others well we also want to agree with others research has proven that most humans value social conformity so much that they will change their own responses even their perceptions to align with the group even when the group is blatantly wrong in the 1950s salman arch gathered groups of college students and told them they were doing a vision test the catch was that in each group everyone was an actor except one person the subject of the test h showed participants an image of a target and first then of a series of the three lines one shorter one longer and one that was clearly the same length as the target line the students were asked which line matched the length of the target line sometimes the actor gave correct answer and sometimes they purposely gave incorrect answer in each case the real study participant answered last the correct answer should have been obvious but influenced by the actors about 75% of the subjects followed the crowd to give an incorrect response at least once this phenomenon has been called groupthink bias we are wired to conform your brain would rather not deal with conflict and debate it would 
much prefer to launch in the comfort of like mindedness that's not a bad thing if we are surrounded by says monks but if we are surrounded by gossip conflicts and negativity we start to see the world in those terms just like the people who went against their own eyes in arch's line experiment the instinct for agreement has a huge impact on our lives it is one of the reasons why in a cultural of complaint we join the fray and the more negativity that surrounds us the more negative we become we think that complaining will help us process our anger but research confirms that even people who report feeling better after venting are still more aggressive post grip than people who did not engage in venting at the bhakti vedanta manor the temple's london outpost there was one monk who drove me crazy if i asked him how he was in the morning he had tell me about how badly he had slept and whose fault it was he complained that the food was bad and yet there was never enough it was relentless verbal diarrhea so negative that i never wanted to be around him then i found myself complaining about him to the other monks and so i became exactly what i was criticizing complaining is contagious and he had passed it on to me studies show the negativity like mine was increased aggression towards random uninvolved people and that the more negative your attitude the more likely you are to have a negative attitude in the future studies also show that long term stress like that generated by complaining actually shrinks your hippocampus that's the region of your brain that affects reasoning and memory cortisol the same stress hormone that takes a toll on the hippocampus also impairs your immune system and has loads of other harmful effects i am not blaming every illness or negativity but if remaining positive can prevent even one of my winter colds i am all for it types of negative people negative behavior surround us so constantly then we grow accustomed to them think about whether you have any of the following in your life complainers like the friend on the phone who complain endlessly without looking for solution life is a problem that will be hard if not impossible to solve cancelers who take a compliment and spin it you look good today becomes you mean i looked bad yesterday casualties who think the world is against them and blame their problems on others critics who judge others for either having a different opinion or not having one for any choices they have made that are different from what the critic would have done commanders who realize their own limits but pressure others to succeed they will say you never have time for me even though they, they are busy as well competitors who compare themselves to others controlling and manipulating to make themselves or their choices look better they are in so much pain and they want to bring others down often we have to play down our success around these people because we know 
they can't appreciate them controllers who monitor and try to direct how their friends or partners spend time and with whom and what choices they make you can have fun with this list seeing if you can think of someone to fit each type but the real point of it is to help you notice and frame these behaviors when they come at you if you put everyone into the same box of negativity they are so annoying you are not any closer to deciding how to manage each relationship on the day i moved to the ashram with six other new monks traveling from england they told us to think of our new home as a hospital where we were all patients becoming a monk detaching from material life was not seen as an achievement in and of itself it simply means that we were ready to be admitted to a place of healing where we could work to overcome the illness of the soul that infected us and weakened us in a hospital as we all know even the doctors get sick nobody is immune the senior monks reminded us that everyone had different sicknesses everyone was still learning and that just as we would not judge anyone else health problems we should not judge someone who signed differently goranga das repeated this advice in brief metaphorical form that we often used to remind ourselves not to harbor negative thoughts towards other don't judge someone with a different disease don't expect anyone to be perfect don't think you are perfect instead of judging negative behavior we try to neutralize the charge or even reverse it to positive once you recognize a complainer is not looking for situation you realize you don't have to provide them if a commander says you are too busy for me you can say should we find a time that works for both of us reverse external negativity the categories above help us step away from the negative person in order to make clear headed decision about our role in the situation the monk way is to dig to the root diagnose and clarify a situation so you can explain it simply to yourself let's use this approach to define strategies for dealing with negative people become an objective observer monks lead with awareness we approach negativity any type of conflict really by taking a step back to remove ourselves from the emotional charge of the moment catholic monk father thomas nating said there is no commandant that says we have to be upset by the way other people treat us the reason we are upset is because we have an emotional program that us if someone is nasty to me i cannot be happy or feel good about myself instead of reacting compulsively and retailing we could enjoy our freedom as human being and refuse to be upset we step away not literally but emotionally and look at the situation as if we are not in the middle of it we will talk more about this distance which is called detachment in the next chapter for now i will say that it helps us find understanding without judgment negativity is a trait 
not someone's identity. A person's true nature can be obscured by clouds, but like the sun, it is always there, and clouds can overcome any of us. We have to understand this when we deal with people who exude negative energy, just like we would not want someone to judge us by our worst movements. We must be careful not to do that to others. When someone hurts you, it's because they are hurt. Their hurt is simply spilling over. They need help and as the Dalai Lama says, if you can help others, if you cannot to do, at least do not harm them. Back slowly away from a position of understanding, we are better occupied to address negative energy. The simplest response is to back slowly away. Just as in the last chapter we let go of the influences that interfered our values. We want to cleanse ourselves of the negative attitudes that cloud our outlook. In the heart of the Buddha's teaching, Teach Nat Han, a Buddhist monk who has been called the father of mindfulness writes, Letting go gives us freedom. And freedom is the only condition for happiness. If in our heart we still cling to anything, anger, anxiety or positions, we cannot be free. I encourage you to purge or avoid physical triggers of negative thoughts and feelings like that sweet shirt your ex gave you or the coffee shop where you always run into a former friend. If you don't let go physically, you won't let go emotionally. But when a family member or a friend or a colleague is involved, distancing ourselves is often not an option or not the first response we want to give. We need to use other strategies. The 25 75 principle. For every negative person in your life, there are three uplifting people. I try to surround myself with people who are better than I am in some way. Happier, more spiritual life, as in sports, being around better players pushes you to grow. I don't mean for you to take this so literally that you label each of your friends either negative or uplifting, but aim for the feeling that at least 75% of your time is spent with people who inspire you, rather than bring you down. Do your part in making the friendship an uplifting exchange. Don't just spend time with the people you love. Grow with them. Take a class, read a book, do a workshop, Sangha, in the Sanskrit word for community and the suggests a refuge where people serve and inspire each other. Allocate time. Another way to reduce negativity if you cannot remove it is to regulate how much time you allow a person to occupy based on their energy. Some challenges we face only because we allow them to challenge us. There might be some people you can only tolerate for an hour a month, some for a day, some for a week. Maybe you even know a one minute person. Consider how much time is best for you to spend with them and don't exceed it. Don't be a savior. If all someone's needs in an ear, you can listen without extorting much energy. 
if we try to be problem solver then we become frustrated when people don't take our brilliant advice they desire to save others in ego driven don't let your own needs shape your response in saying to the fathers a compilation of teachings and maxims from jewish rabbinic tradition it is advised don't count the teeth in someone's else mouth similarly don't attempt to fix a problem unless you have the necessary skill think of your friends as a person who is drowning if you are an excellent swimmer a trained lifeguard then you have the strength and wear with her to help a swimmer in trouble similarly if you have the time and mind space to help another person go for it but if you are only a fair swimmer and you try to save a drowning person they are likely to pull you down with them instead you call for the lifeguard similarly if you don't have the energy and experience to help a friend you can introduce them to people or ideas that might help them maybe someone else is their rescuer reverse internal negativity working from the outside in is the natural way of decluttering once we recognize and begin to neutralize and the external negativities we become better able to see our own negative tendencies and begin to reverse them sometimes we deny responsibilities for the negativity that we ourselves put out in the world but negativity does not always come from people and it is not always spoken aloud and we complain anger it's easily to blame those around us for a culture of negativity but purifying our own thoughts will protect us from the influence of others in the ashram our aspirations for priority were so high that our competition came in the form of renunciation i eat less than that monk i meditated longer than anyone else but a monk has a laugh at himself if the last thought he has at the end of the meditation is look at me i outlasted them all if that's where he arrived when what was the point of the meditation in the monastic way a compilation of quotes edited by hannah ward and jennifer wild sister christine says in a monastery the only competition allowed is to out strip each others in showing love and respect competition breeds envy in the mahabharata an evil warrior envies another warriors and wants him to lose all he has the evil warrior hides a burning block of coal in the robes planning to hurl it at the object of his envy instead it catches fire and the evil warrior himself is buried his envy makes him his own enemy and we catty cousin is shedden fruit you which means taking pressure in the suffering of others when we drive joy from others people failure we are building our houses and pride on the rocky foundations of someone else imperfection or bad luck that is not a steady ground in fact when we find ourselves judging others we should take note in a signal that our mind are tricking us into thinking we are moving forward when in truth we are stuck 
if I sold more apples than you did yesterday, but you sold more today. This says nothing about whether I am improving as an apple seller. The more we define ourselves in relation to the people around us, the more lost we are. We may never completely purge ourselves of envy, jealousy, greed, lust, anger, pride and illusion, but that doesn't mean we should ever stop trying. In Sanskrit, the word anaratha generally means things not wanted and to practice anaratha nivitri is to remove that which is unwanted. We think freedom means being able to say whatever we want. We think freedom means that we can pursue all our desires. Real freedom is letting go of things not wanted. The unchecked desire that leads us to unwanted ends. Letting go doesn't mean whipping away negative thoughts, feelings and ideas completely. The truth is that these thoughts will always arise. It is what we do with them that makes the difference. The neighbor's barking dog is an annoyance it will always interrupt you. The question is how you guide that response. The key to real freedom is self-awareness. In your evaluation of your own negativity, keep in mind that even small actions have consequences. Even when we become more aware of others, negativity and says she always complaining, we ourselves are being negative. At the ashram, we slept under mosquito's net. Every night, we had choose our net and use flashlight to confirm that they were clear of bugs. One morning, I woke up to discover that a single mosquito had been in my net and I had at least 10 bites. I thought of something the Dalai Lama said. If you think you are too small to make a difference, try sleeping with a mosquito. Pity ne negative thoughts and words are like mosquitoes. Even the smallest ones can rob us of our peace. Pity negative thoughts and words are like mosquitoes. Even the smallest one can rob us for our peace. Spot Stop swap. Most of us don't register our negative thoughts much as I did not register that soul mosquito. To purify our thoughts, monks talk about the process of awareness, addressing, and amending. I like to remember this as a spot stop swap. First, we become aware of a feeling or issue. We spot it. Then we pause to address what the feeling is and where it comes from. We stop to consider it. And last, we amend our behaviors. We swap in a new way of processing the movement. Spot, stop, swap. Spot. Becoming aware of negativity means learning to spot the toxic impulses around you to help us confront our own negativity. Our monk teachers told us to try not to complain, compare or criticize for a week and keep a tally of how many times we failed. The goal was to see the daily tally decrease. The more aware we became to these tendencies, the more we might free ourselves from them. Listening your negative thoughts, commands will help you contemplate their origins. Are you judging a friend's appearance and are you equally hard on your own? Are you 
muttering about work without considering your own contribution are you reporting on a friend's illness to call attention to your own compensation or are you hoping to solicit more support for that friend try this audit your negative comments keep a tally of the negative remarks you make over the course of a week see if you can make your daily numbers go down the goal is zero sometimes instead of reacting negatively to what is we negatively anticipate what might be this is suspicion that there is parable about an evil king who went to meet a good king when invited to stay for dinner the evil king asked for his plate to be switched with the good king plate when the good king asked why the evil king replied you may have poisoned this food the good king laughed that made the evil king more even more nervous and he switched the plate again thinking maybe he was being double buffered the good king just shook his head and took a bite of the food in front of him the evil king did not eat that night what we judge or envy or suspect in someone else can guide us to the darkness we have within ourselves the evil king projects his own dishonor onto the good king in the same way our envy or impatience or suspicion with anyone else tells us something about ourselves negative projections and suspicions reflects us own insecurities and get in our way if you decide your boss is against you it can affect you emotionally you might be so discouraged that you don't perform well at work or practically you don't ask for the raise you deserve either way like the evil king you are the one who will go hungry stop when you better understand the roots of your negativity the next step is to address it silence your negativity to make room for thoughts and actions that add to your life instead of taking away from it start with your breath when we are stressed we hold our breath or clench our jaws we slump in defeat or tense our shoulders throughout the day observe your physical presence in your jaw tight if your bro froed these are signs that we need to remember to breathe to loosen up physically and emotionally the bhagavad gita refers to the authority to speech saying that we should only speak words that are truthful beneficial to all pleasing and that don't agitate the minds of other divaka sutta from early buddhist scriptures offers similar wisdom defining a well spoken statement to one that is spoken at the right time it is spoken in truth it is spoken affectionately it is spoken beneficially it is spoken with a mind of good will remember saying whatever we want whenever we want however we want is not freedom real freedom is not feeling the need to say these things when we limit our negative speech we may find we have a lot less to say we might even feel inhabited nobody loves an awkward silence but it's worth it to free ourselves from negativity criticizing someone else work ethic doesn't make you work harder comparing your marriage to someone else don't make 
your marriage better unless you do so thoughtfully and productively judgment creates an illusion that if you see well enough to judge then you must be better that if someone else is falling then you must be moving forward in fact it is careful thoughtful observation that move us forward stopping doesn't mean simply shunning the negative instant get closer to it australian community worker neil beringham said the grass is greener where you water it notice words are saying your negativity over there on your friendly side for the friends do they seem to have more time a better job a more active social life because in the third step swapping you will want to look your seeds of the same on your turf and cultivate them for example take your envy of someone as social real wind and in it find the inspiration to host a party or get back in touch with old friends or organize and after work get together it is important to find our significance not from thinking other people have it better but from being the person we want to be swap after spotting and stopping the negativity in your heart mind and speech you can begin to amend it most of us monks were unable to completely avoid complaining comparing and criticizing and you can't expect you will be completely cured of that habit either but researchers have found that happy people tend to complain wait for it mindfully while thoughtlessly venting complaints makes your day worse it's been shown that read, writing in a journal about upsetting events giving attention to your thoughts and emotions can foster growth and healing not only mentally but also physically we can be mindful of our negativity by being specific when someone asks how we are we usually answer good okay fine or bad sometimes this is because we know a truthful detailed answer is not expected or wanted but we tend to be equally wage when we complain we might say we are angry or sad when we are offended or disappointed instead we can better manage our feelings by choosing our words carefully instead of describing ourselves as feeling angry sad anxious hurt embarrassed and happy the harvard business review list nine more specific words that we could use for each one of these emotions instead of being angry we might better describe ourselves as annoyed defensive or speech spiteful monks are considered quiet because they are trained to choose their words so carefully that is take some time we choose words carefully and choose them with purpose so much is lost in bad communication for example instead of complaining to a friend who cannot do anything about it that your partner always comes home late communicate directly and mindfully with your partner you might say i appreciate that you work hard and have a lot of to balance when you come home later than you promised it drives me crazy you could support me by texting me as soon as you know you are running late when you complains you are understand by ourselves and others they can be more productive in addition to making our negativity more productive 
we can also deliberately swap in positivity. One way to do this, as I mentioned, is to use a negativity like envy to guide us to what we want. But we can also swap in new feelings in English. We have the words empathy and compassion to express our ability to feel the pain that others suffer. But we don't have a word for experiencing vicarious joy. Joy on behalf of other people, perhaps this is a sign that we all need to work on it. If I only find joy in my own success, I am limiting my joy. But if I can take pleasure in the success of my friends and family, 10, 20, 50 people, I get to experience 50 times the happiness and joy. Who does not want that? The material world has convinced us that there are only a limited number of colleges worth attending, a limited number of good jobs available, a limited number of people who get lucky. In such a finite world, there's only so much success and happiness to go around. And whenever other people experience them, your chances of doing so decrease. But monks believe that when it comes to you, happiness and joy, there is always a set with your name on it. In other words, you don't need to worry about someone taking your place. In the theater of happiness, there is no limit. Everyone who wants to partake in Modhita can watch the show. With unlimited seats, there is no fear of missing out. Radhanath Swami is my spiritual teacher and the author of several books, including The Journey Home. I asked him how to stay peaceful and be positive force in the world where there is so much negativity. He said, there is toxicity everywhere around us, in the environment, in the political atmosphere, but the origin is in people's hearts. Unless we clean the ecology of our own hearts and inspire others to do the same, we can be an instrument of populating the environment but if we create priority in our own heart, then we can contribute great priority to the world around us. Transformational Forgiveness Before we find our ways to forgiveness, we are stuck in anger. We may even want revenge to return the pain that a person has inflicted on us, an eye for an eye. Revenge is the mode of ignorance. It's often said that you cannot fix yourself by breaking someone else. Monks don't hinge their choices and feelings on others. Behaviors you believe revenge will make you feel better because of how the other people will react. But when you make your vindictive play and the person does not have the response you fantasized about, guess what? You only feel more pain. Revenge backfires. When you raise above revenge, you can begin the process of forgiveness. People tend to think in binary terms. You either forgive someone or you don't forgive someone but as I will suggest, more than once in this book, there are often multiple levels. These levels give us leeway to be where we are, to progress in our own time and to climb only as far as we can. On the scale of forgiveness, the bottom, though it is higher than revenge. In zero forgiveness, I am not going to forgive that person no matter what. I don't want to hurt them 
but I am never going to forgive them. On this step, we are still stuck in anger and there is no resolution. As you might imagine, that is an uncomfortable place to stay. The next step is conditional forgiveness. If they can apologize, they I will apologize if they promise never to do it again. I will do forgive them. The transitional forgiveness comes from the mode of impulse driven by the need to feed your own emotions. Research at Luther College shows that forgiving appears to be easier when we get or give an apology. But I don't want us to focus on conditional forgiveness. I want you to rise higher. The next step is something called transformational forgiveness. This is forgiveness in the mode of Godness. In transformational forgiveness, we find the strength and calmness to forgive without expecting an apology or anything else in return. There is one level higher on the forgiveness ladder. Unconditional forgiveness. There is the level of forgiveness that is parent often has for a child. No matter what that child does or will do, the parent has already forgiven them. The good news is, I am not suggesting you aim for that. What I want you to achieve is transformational forgiveness. Peace of mind. Forgiveness has been shown to bring peace of our minds. Forgiveness actually conserves energy. Transformational forgiveness is linked to a slew of health improvements including fewer meditations, taken better sleep quality and reduced somatic symptoms including back pain, headaches, nausea and fatigue. Forgiveness is stress because we no longer recycle the anger thought both conscious and subconscious that stressed us out in the first place. In fact, science shows that is in close relationships there's less emotional tensions between partners when they are able to forgive each other and that promotes physical well-being. In a study published in a 2011 edition of the journal Person Relationships, 68 married couples agreed to have an 80-minute talk about a recent incident where one spouse broke the rule of the marriage. The couples then separately watched replays of the interviews and researchers measured their blood pressure. In couples where the victim was able to forgive their spouse, both partners' blood pressure decreased. It just goes to show that forgiveness is good for everyone. Giving and receiving forgiveness both have health benefits. When we make forgiveness a regular part of our spiritual practice, we start to notice all of our relationships blossoming. We are no longer holding grudges. There's less drama to deal with. Try this. Ask for and receive forgiveness. In the exercise, we try to untangle the knot of pain and or anger created by conflict. Even if the relationship is not one you want to salvage or have the option of rebuilding, this exercise will help you let go of anger and find peace. Before you start, visualize yourself in the other person's shoes. Acknowledge their pain and, and understand that it is why they are causing you pain. Then write a letter for forgiveness. 
List all the ways you think the other person did you wrong for giving another person honestly and specifically goes a long way toward healing the relationship. Start each item with I forgive you for keep going until you get everything out. We are not sending this letter so you can repeat yourself if the same thing keeps coming to mind. Write everything you wanted to say but never had a chance. You don't have to feel forgiveness. Yet, when you write it down, what you are doing is beginning to understand the pain more specifically so that you can slowly let it go. Acknowledge your own shortcomings what was your role if any in the situation or conflicts list the way you feel you did wrong startling each with the phrase please forgive me remember you cannot undo the past but taking responsibilities for your role with help us understand and let go of your anger toward yourself and the other person. When you are done with the letter, record yourself reading it. Most phones can do this. Play it back, putting yourself in the position of the objective observer. Remember that the pain inflicted on you isn't yours. It's the other person's pain. When you squeeze orange, you get orange juice. When you squeeze someone's full of pain, pain comes out. Instead of absorbing it or giving it back, if you forgive, you help diffuse the pain. Forgiveness is a two-way street. Forgiveness has to flow in both directions. None of us is perfect and though there will be situations where you are blameless, there are also times when there are missteps on both sides of a conflict. When you cause pain and other cause you pain, it's as if your hearts get twisted together into an uncomfortable knot. When you forgive, we start to separate our pain from theirs and to heal ourselves emotionally. But when we ask for forgiveness at the same time we untwist together. This is a bit thicker because we are much more comfortable finding fault in other people and then forgiving it. We are not used to admitting fault and taking responsibility for what we create in our lives. Forgiving ourselves. Sometimes when we feel shame or guilty for what we have done in the past. It's because those actions no longer reflect our values. Now, when we look at our former selves, we don't relate to their decisions. This is actually good news. The reason we are hurting over our past is because we have made progress. We did the best we could then. But we can do better now. What could be better than moving forward? We are already winning. We are already crushing it. Try this forgive yourself. The exercise above can also be used to forgive yourself. Starting each line with I forgive myself for list the reason you feel angry at or disappointed in yourself. Then read it out loud or record it and play it for yourself. Bring out the objective observer and find understanding for yourself, letting go of the pain. When we wrap our heads around the fact that we can't undo the past, we begin to accept our own imperfections and mistakes. Forgive ourselves and in doing so open ourselves up to the emotional healing we all yearn for.
we need not reduce our thoughts and words to 100% sunshine and positivity, but we should challenge ourselves to dig to the root of negativity to understand its origin in ourselves and those around us, and to be mindful and deliberate in how we manage the energy is absorbed. We begin to let go through recognition and forgiveness. We spot, stop and swap, observe, reflect and develop new behaviors to replace the negativity in our lives. Always striving toward self-discipline and bliss. When you stop feeling so curious about others, misfortunes and instead take pleasure in their success. You are healing. The less time you fixate on everyone else, the more time you have to focus on yourself. Negativity, as we have discussed, often arises from fear. Next, we will explore fear itself, how it gets in our way and how we can make it a productive part of life.